Hi everyone and welcome to today's new webinar, which is the first part in a series of sessions that will be looking at seating prescription and seating solutions. The last few webinar sessions introduced you to our Careflex range of chairs, functions and accessories, which should help us during this new series going forward, relate specialist seating to our clients and understand how it can meet their needs. The next three sessions, part one, part two and part three, will be focusing on seating prescription. This will then be followed by seating solutions. As always, you can contact me with any client specific queries or if you wish to know more information. Thank you and enjoy. Specialist seating provision follows a three step process. Step one, we've covered in previous webinar sessions, and this is the assessment, which includes information gathering and the physical seating assessment, along with goal planning based on the outcomes. The second step is what we will be covering over the next few sessions, and that's chair prescription and chair setup, which will be totally individualized to the client. The final and third step we will cover in future sessions, which will be looking at care planning, handover and review to ensure that the seat and provision continues to meet the client's needs. All three parts of this process are just as important as each other. For the next three webinar sessions, we will be working our way through a prescription checklist. Part one today, we will be looking at comfort, postural support and pelvic stability. Next webinar session, part two, will focus on chair measurements and setup. And part three, we'll be looking at the critical angles for sitting and pressure care. This prescription checklist will then set the foundation for the next few webinar sessions in the series, which will be looking at the specific seating solutions. I realise that I mention this a great deal, but it is critical that we continue to have a holistic approach towards specialist seated provision. This will ensure that we complete a comprehensive assessment with appropriate prescription. It means we can better understand the needs of our clients and their support network but also understand daily life for them too, and how the chair will fit in to ensure compliance. Let's start by looking at the first thing on the checklist, comfort. As you probably already know, this is a critical part of the seat and provision for me. It's one of the most common requests that we hear, customers stating, I want to be comfortable. This seems like such an easy goal to achieve, but everyone has their own ideas on what being comfortable actually means. To some, it could mean feeling safe. To others, it could mean feeling content. To those using other specialist equipment, it could mean the opportunity for some freedom in a different position. And to those who experience pain, it could mean finally being able to relax. Remember from previous webinar sessions, Research has shown that regardless of the clinical benefits, the chair may not be used if the user is simply not comfortable. Comfort is subjective, which is why it's imperative that we involve the client throughout the whole process and make sure that they are happy with the prescription. Comfort as a goal can encompass all aspects of seating and its objectives from pain management to energy conservation and postural support. Proper positioning through appropriate seating can help decrease fatigue, alleviate chronic discomfort and even maximise function. A good sitting posture can also be effective in inhibiting abnormal muscle tone, which can have a significant impact on reducing pain levels associated with spasticity, for example. So hopefully this reiterates the importance of comfort and our clients feeling comfortable within the chair. Otherwise, they are simply not going to use it. The next item that we have on the checklist is postural support and pelvic stability. 
Now this obviously relates to the body segments that we have covered during previous webinar sessions. The pelvis, of course, the thighs, the lower legs and feet, the thorax and shoulder girdle, the upper limbs and the head. First we have the pelvis, of course, it's the foundation for a good sitting posture as it dictates what happens to the body segments above and below. It's positioned at our client's core and so it acts as a support system for the entire body. Pelvic stability is essential for movement and function, as freedom of movement in the upper limbs is achieved through effective stabilisation of the pelvis and trunk. Pelvic stability can also help normalise tone, consequently improving any related pain and encouraging normal movement. The aim is to secure the pelvis in all planes of movement, so the sagittal plane, an anterior posterior pelvic tilt, the horizontal plane, so pelvic rotation, and the frontal plane, so pelvic obliquity. The next body segment moving down are the thighs. Now the buttocks and thighs, as we know, take 75% of a person's body weight. It's therefore essential that they are loaded correctly and that weight is distributed equally over the maximum support surface to encourage effective pressure management. The aim is for the thighs and initial tuberosities to be fully supported, level and as midline as possible. The next body segment is the lower legs. Now, as we know, pelvic stability and trunk functionality are key for good seated posture. Now, if the lower legs are unsupported or misaligned, it can affect the position of the thighs, consequently impacting on the pelvis and trunk. As we know, all body segments will affect one another. Supporting the lower limbs can aid pelvic stability, encourage optimal foot position, manage edema and offer a platform for our clients to reposition. Moving further down the body segments, we next have the feet. As a load-bearing body segment, it can be easy to forget about them, but they are a crucial part of posture management. Insufficient foot support can negatively impact on postural stability, as we naturally seek support through our feet to obtain the proprioceptive feedback required. Now remember that in a seated posture, the feet take 19% of a person's body weight. So without the feet supported, where does 19% of our client's body weight go? Suddenly they could have 94% of their body weight just going through their buttocks and thighs. Now let's move above the pelvis to the thorax and shoulder girdle segment. A person's inability to sit upright may result in decline in overall health and trunk asymmetry can impair respiration, cardiac efficiency, swallow function and digestion. An unsupported trunk can also result in our clients needing more effort to maintain the position and therefore result in fatigue and discomfort. The aim of the seating prescription is to fully support the trunk and align the spine as much as possible to reduce the risk of pressure injury and postural deterioration. The next segment is the upper limbs. Now it's clear that the use of the upper limbs is vital to the performance of tasks and participation in activities of daily living. So upper limb support is essential to prevent drag and relieve stress on neck and shoulder muscles. But remember that upper limb support is not there to support the trunk. You must always start at the pelvis, ensuring adequate pelvic stability and optimum trunk alignment is achieved. Without first achieving this, the client may rely on the upper limbs for stability. You might see clients gripping the chair with their hands or digging their elbows into the sides of the chair. As a result, this vital function and independence that we mentioned will be effective as their upper limbs have lost freedom of movement and suddenly become confined to a load bearing role. And the final body segment is the head. Good head position is essential for optimum physiological function and safety, but it's also vital for achieving the best position for our clients to interact with the outside world and can assist them with orientation and socialization. It's always important, as I've already mentioned, to start at the pelvis to create a stable base. The pelvis and spine will then determine the position of the head. Be mindful that we may need to compromise other body segments to achieve a safe head position. We need to think carefully about swallowing, 
breathing, vision and interaction. Always remember that the failure to protect our client's body shape can result in many health complications. Please refer to session one and two right at the very start of our webinar series for further information and to review with the importance of protecting clients posture. Please now keep an eye out for part two via our newsletter where we will be continuing with the seating prescription checklist and focusing on chair measurements and setup. Thank you and take care. As always, thank you for joining us and I'll be chatting with you soon.